Hey class, welcome to Calculus 3. I'm Dr. Scott Adamson, and today's lesson is to take the dot product between two vectors, which is a scalar quantity, and apply it to a real life situation. The real life situation is this. Suppose there was a 100 meter dash at an Olympics or some competition of some sort, there's a 100 meter dash. The runners are running in the direction of the vector 2i plus 6j. So they're running in this direction. The wind is blowing according to the velocity vector 5i plus 1j kilometers per hour. Now here's the real life nature of it. In a, say a collegiate, high school, or Olympic event, if the wind is blowing at the backs of the runners, then say world records might not be able to stand if the wind is assisting too much. So the question is this, the rules say that a legal wind speed measured in the direction of the dash must not exceed five kilometers per hour. So in this situation, if they're running along this vector, the wind is blowing along this vector, is there enough wind in the direction of the run to exceed five kilometers per hour, thus disqualifying any records in this race? Let's find out. So the first thing you should do in just about any math problem, to be honest, is sketch a little diagram of what's happening. So I've, I've done that here for you. So vector V is the vector that shows the direction of the dash, 2i plus 6j, there it is. The wind vector is 5i plus 1j, there it is. That's awesome, in the regular coordinate system, in the good old xy plane, this is how we would express those two vectors. But the question is this, how much of this wind vector is in the direction of the people running? Here's how we find out. We do something called a projection. We project this wind vector onto this direction vector. And what we mean by projection is this. The projection is such that we're gonna project it perpendicularly. So can you imagine taking this, and I'm gonna, as best as I can, project it perpendicular. So now, this wind vector, instead of having its traditional x component, y component, we now are gonna say it has a component this way and a perpendicular component this way. Those two components now are what we wanna focus on. The one that we're particularly interested in is this one. How much of this w vector's component, perpendicular components, but perpendicular to the direction of the run, how much of that wind vector's um, direction is in the direction of vector v. So we want to figure that out right there. Now to do it, we're going to use dot product, we're going to use some trigonometry, but just for the ease of it, I think, we're going to take this right triangle and just draw it in a more um, conventional way. We're going to take this right triangle out of its current situation, rotate it, and draw it like this. So we rotated this triangle to here. So vector W is the hypotenuse, there's that origin. And here's the amount of vector W that's in the direction of the run. This is the quantity we desire to find. Now, what we have here is just a right triangle trig situation. We want this, we actually can know this. That's just the magnitude of vector w, which we can compute. We actually can know this, the measure of that angle between vector w and vector v. We can use our dot product to find that angle. So if we know or can find out this angle, if we know or can find out this length, then we just have a cosine situation, adjacent, hypotenuse, and angle. We can solve the problem. So. Let's just start getting all the pieces of the puzzle that we need to solve this problem. The first piece of the puzzle, let's go ahead and get the magnitude of vector w. So magnitude of vector w. Now remember how we do magnitude, it's really just a Pythagorean theorem. So it's the square root of the two components of, of uh, vector, w's, vector w squared. So vector w is 5i plus 1j. So the magnitude of vector w is going to be the square root of 5 squared plus 1 squared. The square root of 25 plus 1, the square root of 26. 
So the magnitude of vector w is the square root of 26. The hypotenuse of that right triangle is the square root of 26. All right, this angle, I'm gonna remind you of the geometric definition for dot product. If we found the dot product between two vectors like v and w, geometrically speaking, we took the magnitude of vector w, multiplied it by the magnitude of vector v, times the cosine of the angle in between. It's that angle that we're looking for. We can compute the dot product, we can compute magnitudes of vectors. The only thing we can uh, we'll leave unknown is the value of the measure of that angle theta. Let's start with the dot product. So the dot product between W and V. Now remember, um, V was the vector 2i plus 6j. W was 5i plus 1j. So v, W dot V is going to be found by taking the i components so 2 times 5, the product of the i components, plus the product of the j components, uh, 6 times 1. 2 times 5 plus 6 times 1, 10 plus 6, that would be 16. So 16 equals the magnitude of vector w. That was what we did up here, square root of 26. The magnitude of vector v. Let's work on vector v for a minute. Now, vector v was 2i plus 6j, and so the magnitude of vector v is going to be the square root of 2 squared plus 6 squared. Let me write it as 6 squared. 2 squared is 4, 6 squared is 36, 4 plus 36, 40. So the magnitude of v is the square root of 40. And then the cosine of theta. So once again, we know the dot product of 16. We know the magnitudes of the vectors. The only thing we don't know is the measure of that angle. Well, we can find it. Do some algebra here. The cosine of theta is going to be 16 divided by those magnitudes. Now, just so you know, I'm going to leave them uncomputed until the very end. We've got some more work to do here, so we might as well just leave them uncomputed. So if the cosine of theta is this, then theta is the inverse cosine or the arc cosine of that. So grab your calculator, everybody, and let's compute the inverse cosine of that. In degree mode, I'm gonna do it in degree mode, in degree mode, instead of radian mode, this comes out to be 60.255. And let me say approximately 60.255 degrees. So now we know the length of this hypotenuse. The magnitude of vector W is the square root of 26. We know the measure of that angle is 60.255 degrees. The only thing left to find now is what we want to find. How much of that projected vector is in the direction of V? How big is this adjacent side? So hypotenuse, angle, adjacent, that's a cosine relationship. So we wrap it up this way. From this triangle now, this right triangle, we can say that the cosine of theta, and we know theta is 60.255 degrees. The cosine of 60.255 degrees is that adjacent side, which is what I'm trying to find out. So I'll leave a question mark there. I'm trying to write out that adjacent side to the hypotenuse. So that missing side, that adjacent side, just multiply the square root of 26 over. And there we've got it. Grab your calculator again. Find the square root of 26 times the cosine of 60.255 degrees, and we'll now know the amount of that vector that's in the direction of the run. And if you punch those in, you should get about 2.53. So what we found out here is the amount of vector 
W that is in the direction of vector V is 2.55, and this was a velocity vector, so 2.55 kilometers per hour. Now, the rule stated that the, the wind in the direction of the run had to be less than five kilometers per hour. Boom, we're less than five kilometers per hour, so any records will stand in this event. So let's make sure you know what happened here. What just happened here? We use the dot product, we use a bunch of trigonometry, but what just happened here? Let's go back to the original drawing. Runners are running a hundred meter dash in this direction. The wind is this velocity vector here. The question is, how much of the wind is in the direction of the run? So we projected the wind onto the direction of the dash. Projecting meaning right angle. So now, instead of the traditional horizontal vertical components of vector W, we now have a that component and that component. Still perpendicular, just like this, but we want to know how does that vector project onto vector V? And more specifically, we wanted to know how much of vector W was in the direction of vector V. We really wanted to know that. So what we did is we found the measure of this angle was 60.255 degrees. We knew the magnitude of vector W was the square root of 26. And using some trigonometry, because this was just a cosine relationship, we found that this length right here was 2.53 kilometers per hour. Since the amount of vector W that was in the direction of the race was less than five kilometers per hour, 2.53. This, uh, this race will be qualified for any records. That's what we found out.